I'm sure it's happened to you that you've seen a beautiful sunset so you've whipped out your phone to take a picture only to find that you have to choose between having the pretty sky but some very underexposed buildings or some beautiful shadings on the buildings but a very overexposed sky. So today I'm going to be talking about how our eyes and our technology deal with wide ranges of light variation. The reason we can instantly appreciate a beautiful sunset is because our eyes and our brain are both excellent at dealing with wide variations of light and they're able to present us with a congruent image. Specifically, our eye has a huge dynamic range on the order of 20 stops when all physical, chemical and neural systems are considered. In this context, a stop is a photography term and it essentially refers to the doubling or halving of light. A stop up is actually doubling the amount of light that enters the eye or a camera and a stop down is halving that amount of light. So in essence, the dynamic range of an eye is on the order of 1 to 1,048,576. Compare that to one of the most high-end cameras, which has about 14.5 stops of dynamic range, or 1 to 23,170. Now, there are two quick considerations to be taken into account about these figures about the eye. First of all, this is an absolute range. It's taking into account the fact that we can see clearly in broad and bright sunlight, as well as being able to pick out faint pinpricks of stars in an otherwise pitch black night. Of course, when you mix very bright objects and others that you would normally pick out in dark environments, you do get an effect known as masking, and that is the reason why you're not able to see the stars during the day. However, even when you mix them together, the eye still has a huge dynamic range and it's still much better and will outperform any camera, which is the reason why sunsets look so nice in person but don't always turn out as well on our phone. The second consideration is that our eyes rely a lot more on relative contrast than absolute contrast, especially in our peripheral vision. This is very different to the way a camera works and it is what allows us to be able to pick out details so clearly, even when the light levels vary a lot in the same field of view. So how can we deal with such huge variations of light when taking a picture? I'm going to be focusing on one of the easier solutions which goes under the name of HDR, or High Dynamic Range, but I've also heard it go by the name of Multiple Exposures and Bracketing. Essentially, it simply involves taking multiple pictures of the same image, but at different exposures. Basically, you're focusing in on different ranges of light and then compositing the different parts of the image that are well lit together. This helps to marry the details from the darkest parts of the image with the lightest parts whilst avoiding over and under exposure. You need at least two images to be able to carry out this technique, but most cameras will take between three and seven. Of course, this does rely on the camera being able to take these images very quickly and hopefully focusing on a subject that doesn't move around too much, because otherwise you will probably get some interesting errors. Hopefully this has shed some light on what I think is the fascinating science of HDR and how we cope with huge variations of light. And as always, thank you so much for watching me and I will see you in the next one.